it's now time for the morning show on XL7 TV. Welcome to the morning show on XL7 TV. I'm Bob Richter. Well, this is Scooter. Whoop, whoop. You know what day it is? It's tax day. Tax day. It is tax day. The ever dreaded. You tax reminded day. me that this morning. It's the ever dreaded tax day. Fifteenth really? last day to file your your federal tax and state taxes. Got to be postmarked today. Yep. Got to be postmarked and mailed. And I don't know if they used to do. I mean, it used to be that the the post office would stay open really late on tax day. I don't know if they still do. So don't. Yeah, they used to stay until midnight. Yeah. On tax day, so they can get it postmarked and get it out of there. Don't go by that. Because no, I'm that we're talking about used to. We don't. I have no clue what they do. Used to today. How yeah. do you feel about income tax? Uh, I think it's stupid. Personally, uh, I think you eliminate that and you put a straight sales tax on things, and it keeps a level across the board. You know, ten percent sales tax, whatever. Um, keeps it level across the board, and it's. I think it'd be a lot better than being taxed on your income. I have a hard time. I've always said, ever since I was young and had to start filing, you know, I don't think you should get more of a refund than the amount that you pay in. I agree with that, but that's not necessarily the case. Oh, I, yeah. it's definitely not the case. Yeah. yeah. Like, definitely not the case. Yeah. I think, I think tax day causes sickness disease. Sickness? Mm -hmm. You know what sickness is? I hate to ask no, we're going down real quick. Go ahead. You know, sick of this is I'm sick of this crap. <laughs> <laughs> but sick, I, I don't like sick of this disease. I don't like the income tax, and I think you know you can, you know, certain people get breaks and this and that. I just don't think it's fair across the board, and I don't like the being taxed on my income. I think that uh, if you put a straight sales tax out, that's just my opinion. It, you know, people that have more money buying bigger things, they're paying more in sales tax. I mean, same percentage, they're just paying more because they're buying. And, and I don't think it, yeah. it would have to be 10%. Yeah. It could probably, probably be 5%. Yeah. But I think that that would be a, a better way to go for me. And then you can eliminate the IRS and all that stuff and it'd be a lot better. I think. But what do I know? I think they could keep it for uh, keep the IRS not as the big as it is now. Keep it f to keep a toll on corporations and big businesses. I could see that, but the as far as tax stuff, I, I just whatever it's, you I, know fighting loopholes to get around even that. You know, yeah. so but yeah, it's uh, sick of this disease. Sick of this. I'm sick of this. Sick of this stuff. But being my word, my word or my opinion doesn't amount to nothing. I pay my taxes. <laughs> that send your donation to Scott Scooter yeah. Callies yeah. for president, two thousand twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're not telling you of what club, but <laughs> yeah. what club? the sickness club, the sickness club. I'm the president of the sickness club. <laughs> sickness. <laughs> it's sad, sad moment in time. Yeah. <laughs> so, how was your weekend? Do you have a good um, weekend? Take a guess. You mowed. Oh, well, gosh, yeah. Yes, I was right. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a slim chance that you'd be wrong from now until about <laughs> October. Yeah, I figured. Then we worked in the garden all day yesterday. Awesome. Uh, we moved our garden. No, oh, that's a big garden. We downsized it a little bit. Okay. Um, put up all new fence and stuff, and Tina will start planting plants today. Awesome, awesome. Of course, she got the greenhouse, you know, so therefore yeah, so. Oh, she's got plants ready to go. Yeah, by all means. Yeah, so that's exciting. <laughs> she's excited about it, which is good. That's what she bought it for. You? Uh, I uh, We had a little get-together Saturday. My aunt yeah, and here we my go. dad came by and we did a little cooking and uh, hanging out. And then uh, Sunday I went and helped do a few things for a buddy of mine and uh, finished up my taxes. So that was my weekend. Stamping them today. Oh no, it's I did electronic file. It's already filed. It's already got accepted. I'm like, holy cow! How did that happen? Hmm. Filed it yesterday and then they accepted it uh, federal last night and state sometime early this morning. I was like, holy cow, that's quick. 
You didn't have to write a check? Huh? Unfortunately, I didn't. Jeez. I pay a lot in, though. We claim hardly nothing, you know, zero on my tax stuff and all that. So I pay in a bunch throughout the year. I'd rather <laughs> have some coming back than try to do it where I'm having to pay at the end. I'd just rather pay more up front. There you go. Morning Prayers brought to you by Hospice of the Ozarks, 870-508-1771 is our number. Greg Wood and his staff be glad to answer any questions you might have about hospice care. They've been serving Baxter and Marion County since 1979, and I'm sure they'd be glad to help you with anything, any questions that you might have. And now the morning prayer. Lord, just thank you for the day that you've given us, Lord. We just thank you for the weather and, and uh, just the atmosphere that we live in, Lord. It's just uh, the part of the country. Lord, we just thank you for your hand in creating all of it, Lord. We just thank you for uh, being with us. Lord, we pray that you'll be with our troops as they're overseas fighting in conflicts. Things seem to be heating up where they are, Lord. We just pray that you'll keep our guys safe. Be with their families as we worry about their loved ones on a daily basis, Lord. We just pray that you'll bring them home safely. We pray for our federal, our state, and our county government, along with our city as well. Lord, we pray for our students as they travel to and from school and to their extracurricular activities uh, during and after school as well. Lord, we just thank you for all that you do in our lives. We pray that you'll continue to lead God, direct us, and keep us safe. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The morning prayer, Hospice of the Ozarks, 870-508-1771. We'll be back in just a moment after a quick word from Bob and Linda Zador, the Z-Team, Century 21, Lee Mac Realty. Hi, I'm Bob Zador, the Z-Team. I'd like to share something with you. Our team didn't need to reach everyone to be considered successful. We only needed the power of one. One person who was delighted with the way they were treated, helping them to reach their real estate goals. One person who told another person, who told another, and so on. So if you're ready to buy or sell real estate, the Z Team would like to be your one. Give us a call. 870-405-0793, Century 21 Lee Mac Realty, 1024 Highway 62 East in Mountain Home. Welcome back to the morning show on XL7 TV. It's time for Lake Levels Dam Reports and all the weather updates brought to you by Bob and Linda Zadora, the Z Team, Century 21 Lee Mac Realty. RetiredArkansas.net is the website. If you go there, click on Live Views. This is what you get to see today. Whoa! Hello. Fog. I don't Snow know about you, but it was water. foggy coming in for me this morning. No, not a bit this morning for oh, me. Oh, I had wipers going trying to get all the moisture off my windshield. The only thing slowed me down this morning was this little white car from Texas that never got over 20 miles an hour from Old Military Road to college to uh, 62. I finally passed him first chance I had. It was crazy. No, it was uh, it was a really foggy coming in early this morning. You know, as foggy as that is, that's still a pretty cool shot. It is a nice shot. You got another shot? Here's look the. At? Here's the same uh, picture, but during the daytime. What time of the year was that done? Do you know? It was in the summertime. That's all I know. I don't know exactly. Look how what clear that water is. Oh yeah. Mm. What you're looking picture. at is a shot into Baxter County from Marion County, Arkansas side. The Rainbow Bridge to your left. Behind it is the Old Trellis Bridge for the road tracks. Way off to your left is the city of Bull Shoals. Straight ahead is the state of Missouri. Over to your right is the city of Gasville, backed up by the city of Mountain Home. Straight ahead is downtown Cotter, Arkansas. Contractors Trust Railroad Museum over to your right, downtown Cotter. Straight ahead, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The um, trout capital of the world, Cotter, Arkansas. It is. Is that self-proclaimed or proclaimed by someone else? I have no clue. You're supposed to know this stuff, Scooter. I know, I know. Man, Scooter, the man of all knowledge. Let's see that pen real quick. Well, well there you go. Go ahead. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's take a look at the radar. <clears throat> Central United States is all clear. Arkansas, Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, and Kansas. All looks pretty clear. Some rain going on in Utah, a little bit up in Montana, some up in the northern port, northern portion of South Dakota, Minnesota as well. We'll zoom into the great state of Arkansas. From Rogers to Blavo, Fayetteville over to Jonesboro, Fort Smith to Memphis, Conway to Little Rock, Hot Springs, Pine Bluff. 
Texarkana over to Greenville, Mississippi. Looks like we're clear all day today, Scooter. Be a good day for you to get outside and do something. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> good day for mowing. I will be right at 4 o'clock. Red flag warning across the, uh, well, from Texas all the way up into Nebraska, into South Dakota. And, of course, the magical state line blocked it out of, out of the... Uh, northern portion of North Dakota. Arkansas is clear. Missouri as well. Got a little bit of something going on right here. Dense fog advisory in Mississippi. Seven day forecast. Today, partly sunny. High of 83. Chance of rain tonight around 30%. Low of 65. Thunderstorms likely. Then breezy. High of 76 on Tuesday. Chance of rain Tuesday night. 20%. Low of 64. Wednesday, sunny. High of 83. Clear on Wednesday night, low of 53. Thursday, slight chance of thunderstorms, high of 83. Thursday night, 57. And Friday, 40% chance of rain, high of 73. Looking at next weekend, 40% chance of rain, high of 63 degrees. Saturday night, low of 44. Sunday, sunny, high of 62. Lake levels and dam reports. Lake Norfolk, 553.77, which is 1.77 above full pool of 552 no generation is happening at this time uh, but they do have spillway gates open at 630 or excuse me 830 cubic feet per second and bull shoals 657.73 which is 1.27 below full pool of 659 currently generating one there you go there's lake levels, dam reports, and all the weather updates brought to you by Bob and Linda Zadora. The Z Team, Century 21 Lee Mac Realty, 870-405-0793 is their number. RetiredArkansas.net is their website. Go there, click on MLS listings, see what's available, and then give them a call. Again, their number is 870-405-0793. You're watching The Morning Show on XL7 TV. We'll be back in just a moment. When the acres add up, so does the work. The Kubota LO2 Series is ready for it. Part of the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience, it features powerful, dependable Kubota diesel engines, performance matched attachments, and the versatility to get the job done right. For all your Kubota needs, visit Ozarks Farm and Lawn in Mountain Home. For all the Welcome back to the Morning Show on XL7 TV. It's time for Community News and Happenings brought to you by Ozarks Farm and Lawn, the dealership that deals. Some tractors out there, yeah. Some tractors? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some bunch of tractors. Some, yeah. Lots. They have got a huge inventory in stock right now of tractors. One end to the other in all shapes and sizes and go out and test drive and see which one fits you best. Lawn tractors, lawn mowers, lawn tractors, zero turns, they got them. Big ones, little ones, medium-sized ones, skags, Kubotas. RTVs. RTVs. They have got RTVs, and they've got a bunch of them. They got a large stock of them. So. There you go. Go check them out. Ozark Storm Lawn, 870-425-3434. Second Amendment Legacy Foundation is Friday night, Scooter. Did you get your tickets? I did not. You ain't going. There ain't no tickets left. I know. About to say they got to be <laughs> full by now. They were getting close a while back, but yeah, they had no tickets left. Uh, in fact, I was going to try to tap in on the Jim Brown Company table. Yeah, it's full, which is okay because they've got a softball game Friday night, so I got to do it. Ah. So, anyway, it's a fundraiser banquet for the Second Amendment Legacy Foundation. They are a five hundred one c three. You can get more information about that at two a legacyfoundation dot org. And I won't tell you about the tickets. You can probably still buy a raffle stack. Yeah, bet I bet you could. I bet you could buy those. There's a $250 raffle stack, and there is a $500 raffle stack. Uh, give Dan Hall a call, 870-421-2322. Junior Bomber Football Camp for current grades 5, 6, and 7. It's at Bomber Stadium. It'll be on the 24th and 25th. 
from 5.30 to 7. It does not cost anything. Wear comfortable athletic clothing with football cleats or tennis shoes. Bring a bottle of water for more information. Get a hold of one of your teachers at school or call, get a hold of Coach Steve Airy at sairy at mhbombers.com. T-shirts will be provided by the locker room. It's uh, football season just around the corner. Cast for kids at McKay Park. I text over to uh, Mr. Denver West Friday or Saturday night, and they do still have a couple of openings, and they'd be glad to have you fill them up. If, whether you want to volunteer, if you are a parent of a special needs child, get a hold of Mr. Denver West at 870-632-9499. This is a fishing event for children with special needs. Uh, join them in the morning, followed by fishing, uh, morning of fishing, followed by lunch and a special awards ceremony. They're going to end up with a tackle box, a fishing rod, a t shirt, t -shirt. Uh, just a good time. Hamburgers and hot dogs be provided by Farm Bureau Insurance. Uh, they will be there cooking for you. Uh, must be Participants must be at least six years of age or older, accessible to all disabilities. Parent and guardian, parent and or guardian must. Uh, plan on staying with their child throughout the whole event. Uh, we had them on the show last Wednesday. This is a good event for a child with special needs to get out and have some interaction with some other kids, uh, with some adults that are there to help them and just serve them any way they can. It's from 9 to, nine to 1 on April the 27th at McCabe Park on Jerry Baker Lane here in Mountain Home. There's another youth football camp coming up in June. Um, We'll have more information on that. It's going to be June 17th. It's uh, put on by the Mallet Family Foundation, and we'll talk more about that as time progresses. Let's see if we're getting news worth talking about. Da -da, nope. Nope. <laughs> Let's see. That didn't take long. No. no it does. It usually don't. Uh, da -da -da -da. Pinkston Middle School will be headed to the World Championship at Houston, Texas for robotics. Uh, Pinkston Robotics team will be down there from the 17th through the 20th, and that will be uh, a good time had by all those. Chrissy Davis does a great job with those students, and it's part of the first first robotics Lego team. Um, go down there. It's Pinkston Robotics, Houston, Texas, on the 17th through the 20th. Uh, you remember Coach Shane Patrick? Yeah. He led the Bombers down to the uh, finals in the state tournament back in 06. Uh, he is now the superintendent of schools at Salem Springs. Awesome. Yeah. We already talked about Sick of This Day, uh, <laughs> which is make sure you get your taxes postmarked today. Or extension filed. And that don't make sense either because you still got to pay what you think you owe. Yeah. With your extension. You're supposed to, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, supposed to. Yep, there you go. A Mountain Home Naval Junior ROTC defeated John F. Kennedy AJ ROTC to finish their regular season. That's congratulations to them. And let's see what else we got going on here. I'm not thinking a whole lot more. Da, 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 da. Nope, I probably do a scooter. Community News and Happenings brought to you by Ozarks Farm and Lawn, the dealership that deals, 870-425-3434, Highway 62 Southwest at Buford Road. Go out there and see them if you need a tractor, a tetter, a baler, a lawn tractor, a zero turn. Go talk to them. They got them. We'll be back in just a moment with Monday Morning Sports Update. For all things glass, contact the professionals at Clarizalt's Glass in Mountain Home. Whether you're needing a rock chirpy pair or a full windshield replacement, Clarizalt's Glass can take care of all of your automotive glass needs with fast turnarounds at competitive prices. They service business and residential customers and can custom cut any glass or provide you with the right fit for your home windows, sliding doors, commercial glass, or even a frameless shower enclosure. Contact Clearizalt's Glass today for a quote or to schedule your next glass project. That's Clearizalt's Glass, located in Mountain Home. Your senior health care specialist is Vaco Insurance in Mountain Home. Retired law enforcement and disabled veteran owner Frank Vaco and staff can help you with all your insurance needs. 
Tobacco Insurance provides coverage for most carriers in the area, such as Medicare, Affordable Care Act, Individual, or any other health or life insurance options. With over 13 years experience and agents in multiple areas and locations throughout northern Arkansas and southern Missouri, Faco Insurance is the right choice to handle all your insurance needs. That's Faco Insurance, located in Mountain Home. Have you ever noticed every time you wash your car, you end up wetter than the actual car? Next time, run down to Car Care and let the friendly staff put a smile on your face. Car Care of Mountain Home has a variety of services to clean your vehicle's needs, inside and out. From a simple wash and shine to their outstanding detail services. Located 1525 Highway 62 East in Mountain Home. Stop by Car Care of Mountain Home today because driving a clean car always makes you feel good. When you think about Hospice of the Ozarks, it's our desire that you think about finding a way to live your life to the fullest while living with a serious illness. If you ever need help and support, we provide a team of healthcare professionals and volunteers that will support your physical, emotional, and spiritual aspects of life while doing the same for your family and caregivers in the comfort of your own home or wherever you call home. When you think about Hospice of the Ozarks, We hope that you grant us permission to walk on the journey with you. Your not-for-profit option since 1979. All you've ever wanted was a place to write your story. You hear it's not the right time to buy or sell a house, but really, the best time is when it's right for you. The real estate markets, they change, they go up, they go down. One thing that doesn't change is where you want to be in your life. The professionals you team up with will make your story happen. The Z-Team are the professionals you need to hire for your next chapter. So call the Z-Team at 870-405-0793, Century 21 Lemac Realty, 1024 Highway 62 East, retiredtoarkansas.net. Welcome back to the Morning Show on XL72. It's time for the Monday Morning Sports Update. Looks like the Lady Bomber uh, softball team will be headed to Clinton to play the match down there. Um, that game will start at 4.30. It's a varsity and then followed by a junior varsity matchup. And da, da, da. Mountain Home Softball will have their third road trip in five days as they travel down to Little River uh, for an outing with Clinton. A varsity will begin at 4.30 followed by a junior varsity. Elsewhere, Cotter will host Yeovil Summit. Uh, Norfolk entertains Shirley. Viola is home against Greer's Ferry. Calco Rock travels over to Strawberry. Bakersfield will go to Norwood. Gainesville heads to Mansfield. Salem will host Hoxie. Izzard County entertains uh, Cedar Ridge. Then Melbourne's home against Sloan Hendricks. On the baseball side, Cotter is home against Bakersfield. Norfolk hosts Shirley. Uh, da, 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 da. Marshall will go. Marshall will be at home for Mountain View as it's senior day at Marshall. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, the Mountain Home Junior High will be hosting the Northeast Arkansas Conference Meet. Schools that will participate in that. Um, I guess there's just a bunch of them schools in the Northeast. In track? Mar- in the track. Okay. It's the Marion, uh, B. Marion, and West Memphis, and Jonesboro, Mountain Home. Maybe a pair of school if they've entered that conference yet or not. It's awesome. going to start at one o'clock. It'll be held at Bomber Stadium at the track. They have a date. What was the date on it? Today. Today. Oh, today. Yeah. Okay. Pay attention. There will be a test. Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And let's see here. The Mountain Flyers went to Kansas City to wrestle in the Adidas Nationals. We want to go ahead and mention some of those. Peyton Smith in the sixth grade is the champion for the 67 pounds. Uh, Eric Polland is the fifth grade heavyweight runner-up. Annabelle Williams uh, took third place in the fifth grade girls from the 68 to 75 pounds. She is the runner-up there. Oh, she's she took third place in the 68, and then she was the runner-up in the 75. So they wrestled two. Weight classes? They, yeah, on the girls, you have an option to wrestle, I think, freestyle and then wrestle in regular. So she may have done both of them. There you go. Lincoln Shagnon in the sixth grade and got third place in the 92. Uh, Ruth Ann Williams, kindergarten through second grade. Um, she took fifth place in the 40 pounds. Uh, Dylan LaFevers took fourth place in the 92 pounds. In the fourth grade, 
92 pounds, took seventh place, uh, Elise Hebert. She took third in the fifth grade, uh, 77 pounds, and seventh place, 84 pounds. And then also wrestling in their brackets uh, at the Adidas Nationals with Corbin LeFevers and Zane Smith. Well, congratulations to the Flyers. Uh, I guarantee you they'll be working toward the next the next match already, which is oh, yeah. until next season. Because doesn't this wrap their season up pretty much? Pretty much, yeah. Congratulations to all those young wrestlers as well. Uh, let's see what else we might have here. I was thinking that we look really quick. Make sure we don't have a baseball game sneaking up in on us today. Uh, tomorrow at the um, McLean Park, Lady Bomber softball will play Greenwood for a double varsity doubleheader, and then the Bombers will play Greenwood and a varsity doubleheader as well. So awesome! There you go. That's the Monday morning sports update. We'll be back in just a moment. When you're out of town, make sure your pet is with someone who will love them as much as you do. At 201 Pet Salon and Resort, your pet is cared for just as they would be at home. 201 Pet Salon and Resort is the only all-sweet climate-controlled and air-filtered boarding facility in the area with private and spacious rooms to keep your pet relaxed. And with over three-quarters of an acre of fence play area, your pet will receive the proper exercise they deserve. 201 also offers professional grooming services. Your best friend is in good hands at 201 Pet Salon and Resort in Mountain Home. Providing caring, compassionate services at an affordable price is our goal at Connor Family Funeral Home. Connor Family is a full-service funeral home that treats our friends and neighbors just like family with a wide range of services and options to meet your family's needs and customs. We are the first on-site crematory in the area. Connor Family addresses all the details with no hidden fees, so you can rest assured that you are treated like family for a more personalized and worry-free service. That's Connor Family Funeral Home, where compassion and affordability meet, located in Mountain Home. Jim Brown Company keeps you cool when it's hot and warm when it's not. A trusted name in the Mountain Home community, Jim Brown Company provides timely heating and cooling installation and repairs. Our certified technicians incorporate new technology on every job to provide you with the most advanced services. At our metal fabrication shop, we handle projects big and small. We've created everything from commercial ducts to custom designs. I'd recommend Jim Brown Company to my friends and neighbors. The reason being they have high-tech equipment, their service techs are well qualified for the job that they do, and they also send me a report after all the work is done so I know exactly what my unit's doing. By visiting our showroom, you can learn all about our heating and cooling products. We'll educate you on your options and help you decide on the right solution. For total comfort at your home or business, choose Jim Brown Company. Quality service with a family name since 1964. You have to tell that story. Welcome back to the morning show on XL7 TV. It's time for Monday morning sports. Coach Steve Jones, athletic director for Yellville Summit High School or Yellville Summit Public Schools. He's going to introduce to us the new head football coach for the Yellville Summit Panthers. Well, Bob, I'm not going to uh, make this long and flowery. Flowery. F fancy. Not going to decorate this <laughs> yeah, up anymore. Not going to decorate it as much. Uh, we've. Uh, over the course of the last few weeks, we've interviewed a lot of candidates and talked to a lot of people. And uh, we've uh, picked out this young man here, Chasen McCarthy, who comes to us by way of Shiloh Christian, has an excellent track record of coaching in the past and uh, has even been a bomber at one time. But uh, the new Yellow Summit head football coach will be Chasen McCarthy. Welcome, sir. And congratulations on your new position at Yellow Summit. Thank you. Right off the top, I want to make sure people understand that uh, Coach McCarthy was with the Mountain Home Bombers at one time, and you might remember him because in 2014, was it 14, you, you uh, proposed to your wife in 14? Yes, sir. Proposed to his wife at Mountain Home Bomber Stadium in front of the little bomber airplane. <laughs> uh, folks may not remember your name, but they'll remember the event. So we'll throw that out there real quick. Absolutely. I didn't know that that story was going to make it on today. That was, that was surprising. Or you'd be surprised what makes it on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys off the air. 
Jones is very tight-lipped. He would not share any. The only clue he gave me was <laughs> we're interviewing a few coaches from out home. He wouldn't tell me anything past that. <laughs> and I almost begged him. Mm-hmm. I'd have bribed him, but, you know, he's a man of he, – he <laughs> Should have busted them donuts out. You might have gotten in. Might have busted <laughs> yeah. some donuts. Some cinnamon rolls might yeah. have got me. So then I got word that uh, the coach might have a tie to a Christian school, and I thought, well, what's Christian school? Mountain Home, who do we got over there? Well, there's no – so I started snooping around and going way back. You know, I've been doing Bombers football in the press box since 1995. So I know a lot of the coaches that have gone through. A lot of them I've watched as kids come through. I thought, well, wait a minute. Let me go back through and look. Where's McCarthy at? So I'll pull you up and I'm checking you out and Shiloh Christian. Well, that's a that's a plus. Mm-hmm. So I ran into Mr. Henderson a couple weekends ago and I said, hey, I'm not looking for you to tell me who this is. Just let me know if I'm on the right track. He said, I can't tell you anything. <laughs> at that point, I knew I was on the right track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So congratulations again on your uh, position here. What made you decide to come back to a small school uh, like Yellville? Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me and giving me the opportunity to come on here and, and talk about this. And we're really excited to uh, join uh, Yellville Summit. Um, what made us decide to come back? Honestly, um, we just felt like the Lord was calling us to this place. He was leading us to a place of growth, a, pl- a new challenge, a new opportunity, a new season of life uh, for m- both my wife and I. Um, and just the opportunity to come and build a program. Uh, I know that Yovo Summit has had some success in the past and has some tradition there, and over the past maybe 10-ish years have not reached that same level of success and haven't had that same tradition. And uh, the opportunity to come and build something special and uh, turn something around and really um, improve a situation for those kids and create a program that they want to be a part of and something they can be excited about and something the community can be proud of, um, that opportunity really drew me to this place. So, When you left Mountain Home, first of all, where did you come to Mountain Home from? So uh, Mountain Home was my first high school job out of college. I had been a student assistant coach, receivers coach at Hendricks College while I finished up my undergrad degree at UCA and then came to Mountain Home with Coach Joyce. Okay. So you finished up with Coach Joyce and left here, went where? So after that, my wife, uh, we, we had gotten engaged and married while we were in Mountain Home, and then she got into medical school at UAMS in Little Rock. And so we went back to that area, and uh, I took a job as assistant head coach and offense coordinator at Clarendon. Okay. What's your wife's specialty? Uh, she's family med, family medicine. So Awesome. Good job. Welcome back. Welcome her back to the area Yeah, thank as you. well. <clears throat> so you went from there to Shiloh? Uh, actually, so we were at Clarendon for only one year, and then an uh, opportunity came about to progress to a 6A school as an office coordinator at Sheridan High School, um, just south of Little Rock. And so we were there, moved uh, there with Coach Lance Parker, and um, spent three years trying to turn that program around and, and started accomplishing some things. You know, ended up hosting a playoff game that third year and beating El Dorado for the first time in school history. And so about that time, my wife was finishing up her medical school and she matched to a residency in Springfield, Missouri, um, which is 2020, so also COVID time. And so um, I started looking around that area to see, you know, coaching opportunities and things like that and did some research. And I wanted to go a place where I could learn something and learn from somebody that maybe I couldn't get anywhere else. And um, hooked up with Coach Mock uh, in that area, Coach Mike Mock in, in at Glendale High School where they were five wide, empty offense, throwing around every play, and um, went there for the next three years and until 2023 when my wife finished residency and then got connected with Coach Conaway at uh, Shiloh this last year. So, And you told me off camera that Shiloh has been very, very helpful in getting the transition started and will help you on through uh, getting moved over this way. Uh, yes, sir. They've, they've been uh, tremendous, very gracious, and – um, I'd like to think they're sad to lose me, but they've been really good about helping me and, and you know. No, they get to help just, you too much, you think they're pushing you out. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But no, they've been really good to me and allow me the opportunity to come over here and work when I can and, and do the things that I need to do to prepare this program um, and also still take care of the kids back there as well. So, What do you teach at Charlo? Uh U.S. history. What will you teach here? Uh, it's kind of still, I think we're working on those things. Probably PE. But probably something <laughs> Health along PE, those something lines. Something along yeah. those lines. Yeah. Uh, 
Do you coach anything other than football? Yes, sir. I coach track as well, assistant tracks. Okay. Has he hooked you into doing something like that here? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, this relationship's still young. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't do that. Oh, uh, you know, Coach McCarthy has a – we've talked a lot about – what Yelvel needs and things that you know he'd like to have as football coach. And the only thing I have guaranteed him, and this is the truth, I guaranteed a bunch of hard work. That's all. Okay, I'll try to get everything else, but all I'm guaranteeing you is this. And uh, you know, so far he is not disappointed. I know. <clears throat> what time did you have to get up this morning? Uh, I got up about four. About four. four yeah. Okay, and he's gonna be here till eight tonight. You know, that's that's a that's a long day. Are you doing some kind of public announcement today? Actually, yes, sir. Uh, we, we've kind of done that on social media and whatnot, but we are having a Meet the Parents uh, tonight. We threw this together somewhat in a hurry. Uh, you know, we, we, Coach has to drive so long to get over here that mm -hmm. you know, we kind of need to work around that schedule. But I, I expect a good turnout tonight. and uh, I, I actually can't wait to introduce Coach McCarthy to our, our parents and stuff. Everybody's very excited about this. It'll be a good time. I think you'll enjoy being at Yaleville for sure. Uh, the community comes out. They really do. The football is their thing there. <laughs> and um, if you win a few, you'll gain a few. <laughs> yeah. I, I, tell, I tell everybody that listen to this, we can be one and eight going into game week 10 of the season, and it can be snowy and cold. And there'll still be a crowd there to watch, even if we're playing another one and eight team, you know, because it's just – it's it is the show <clears throat> and like bob said you know you win four or five or more all of a sudden now it, it's, it's really standing oh yeah it, it becomes a really big deal then yeah so we're excited about that the uh shallow christian is coming to the 6a uh, so we'll see them this year for the first time uh, that school has grown quickly and their programs have grown quickly. Was it a tough decision for you to to make the, that decision to leave Shiloh to come to a, a smaller school, uh, going back to three A, which helps? Yes. Uh, was it a tough decision? Uh, absolutely. This is it was probably um, one of the toughest decisions when it comes to career changes or, or moves in our career that my wife and I have ever had to make. Um, you know, Shiloh, it's a, obviously a great football program with a lot of tradition. And from that aspect, you know, why would you ever want to leave a program that's competing for state championships every year? Mm -hmm. um, and, and on top of that, and even more important than that, just the people there and uh, people that I worked with and the friends that we made, it was incredibly challenging uh, to make that decision. But we felt like um, this was an opportunity for us to grow and an opportunity for us to make an impact in another place. And um, that was really what led us here. So, good deal. Uh, Jonathan Bulletin is going to be the new basketball coach over at Shiloh Christian. Yes, Did sir. Did you know him? Uh, not a whole lot. We uh, interacted very little while we were there. Just being, you know, he's been a basketball coach, and me and we kind of stand. We tend to stay in, in the indoor and around our own sports uh, a lot over there. But from what I know of him and, and the chances that I've been around him, you know, he's a great guy and is going to do an incredible job with that basketball program. So. I know you've only had the job for less than a week. What's the first thing out of the out of the gate that you plan on doing? Uh, the first thing out of the gate is we're going to try to to bring uh, recruit as many players as possible. Everybody that ever even thought about being involved with the football program, we want to find a spot for them and get them back out there and let them you know be a part of this new era of Panther football and and get excited about it. So. Coach Jones, every year you guys have a motto. Have you got the motto for this year? You know, uh, I, that's interesting that you bring that up because, <clears throat> yes, and I hadn't even told Coach McCarthy this, but every year our school, all our sports teams will have a, a motto. And, you know, it's been stuff like four or more when we're talking about winning four district titles with all our sports. Uh, now I can't think of any, you know, <laughs> blank. And Coach has one that I'm, I kind of want to steal. It's a build on the rock. And he talked about in his interview, and actually several times we've talked on the phone, building you know, a rock as a foundation of your program and then just building on that. And I just – I love that for a lot of reasons. And I hadn't told him that, but I may steal that for our school-wide uh, <laughs> – Our, sport, motto, of our motto for the year, yeah.
something like that. And I may not. I'm not he may want to keep it for football. I understand that, too. And nothing wrong with it. No. Fits, it fits school-wide. It does. It absolutely Program does. Program-wide, for sure. Yeah. Coach Jones, we'll, when we take our break, we'll come back and we'll talk about the other sports going on, but we want to give Coach McCarthy some other time. Coach, do you have any plans? Uh, where were you focused? Were you stay just focused on varsity in high school, or were you uh, get involved in junior high all the way down in the Pee Wee program? Uh, I'm going to try to be involved with the lowest level that I can possibly get to, whether that be third grade, second grade. Well, we don't want to say start. lowest, Coach. We want to say youngest. Um, youngest. I mean youngest, <laughs> not look, you know. <laughs> Um, we want to build the foundation uh, from the, the youngest levels of our program all the way to the top and have some vertical alignment and use the same language, use the same fundamentals, the same teaching, and we want to be involved. You know, we want those kids in third grade to be excited about when they get an opportunity to be a member of the Varsity Panthers. And, and you know, it's going to take emphasis and uh, encouragement from the lowest and youngest levels to the highest and we want to make sure that we're there for those guys and building those relationships because that's what keeps kids coming out it's not um, not just about focusing on winning games at the varsity level but building those relationships with even the youngest guys so how much time do you have between now and your first game that you'll be able to do that inner school recruiting you'll be able to do some uh, develop developmental skills uh, and weight training. When when will you be able to start all that? When will you be able to get over here and start that stuff? So we're we're starting everything now. We have some great assistant coaches over there that are um, going to be you know working in the weight room every day and and already working to recruit and uh, build relationships with kids while I'm not there. Um, days like today, in the next few weeks, I'll be there as much as I can. To, you know, a few times a week and. Uh, and during that time, my plan is to be going around classrooms and walking the halls and introduce myself and talking to every kid that I can get in front of uh, to recruit. And then during those athletic periods, working, working hard in the weight room and trying to install our stuff and um, work on our skills and the things that we want to be about. And of course, I'll be here all summer. And uh, during that time, we'll start to build relationships with uh, some of those peewee coaches and some of those uh, youth programs and things like that and start to build those things as well. I'm sure, Coach Jones, if you walk through the hallway of Yellville Summit High School or Junior High, there's some young farm boys that could come out and play football. There, there always is. That don't currently. Yes, uh, there are several. And, well, <clears throat> speaking of that, today we have scheduled for Coach Mark, Coach Marthy, Coach McCarthy uh, is going to talk to all of our sixth grade, sixth graders and uh, sixth grade boys and say, look, you know, if you want to come out for football. And, you know, he said something um, the other day that I thought was really – Profound. Uh -oh. You've drove by. <laughs> we've all drove by a yard and seen Ken's out playing football. Mm -hmm. Are they throwing it or handing it off? They're throwing it, and uh, you know it's a way to get more kids involved in the offense. He said something else I like too. I'd rather see, you know, five kids catch five passes than one kid carry the ball thirty times. You know, and that gets more people involved. And, and I think. Our young kids are going to respond to this. Hey, I've got a chance to catch a pass. And, you know, when, you're, when you catch a pass, you're just one move away from gaining 10 or 15 more yards, you know, or, or breaking it all the way. So we're pretty fired up about that. And then today, he and I are going to walk the halls. And I can just tell you right now, uh, you know, a football coach at Yeovil, you're kind of a – actually a coach, all the coaches are this way. They're kind of rock stars. I mean, they walk the halls and the kids are always happy to see them and stuff. And, you know, you talk about the kids. When I was uh, fourth, fifth grade, younger, the high school football team had to walk through the elementary playground to go to football practice. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, we stopped everything. And we got there high-fiving them. And I didn't know if they were one and nine or nine and one, didn't care. They were, it might as well have been, you know, Walter Payton and, and Terry Bradshaw walking out as far as I was concerned. And that's the way we want the young kids at Yellville to see the high school kids. And for them to be very visible and Coach McCarthy to be very visible, uh, talking to people and being, a, you know, we know he's a professional teacher. He's going to do a good job with whatever class he teaches. Uh, you know, if it's AP, American History, no, I'm kidding, it won't be that. <laughs> but uh, whatever, he's going to do a good job. And that's part of it. You know, you're not just a coach, you're also a teacher. In the smaller schools throughout the state, the hometown heroes are the coaches and the athletes. It's just the way it is. That's the way it is. Just, just the way it yes. is. Yes. The having that attitude and getting 
getting more and more kids involved, and it sounds like you're a passing coach. Is that the way it is? Uh, I just I prefer the term football coach. You know, we're going to do what it takes to win games. You know, I like to throw it. I like to run it. You know, you got to throw to score, run to win. So. Predominantly, Yeva has always been a, a smash mouth football team. Predominantly, right? yes. The handoff and hope the run. <laughs> Three yards in a cloud of dust. Yeah. Or a pile up. Or a pile up. Yeah. <laughs> scrum, scrum down the field. Yeah. We've done that a lot. Yeah. We we won't be in as many rugby scrums this year, uh, but we still want to be physical and be able to run the football. So. There you go. It's time for a quick break. You're watching the morning show on XL7 TV. We'll be back in just a moment. Diatli Dental Care is a family-owned dental practice. Doctors Irvin and Christina Diatli grew up in the Twin Lakes area and are proud to serve the community. With modern treatment methods and state-of-the-art technology, they are dedicated to providing exemplary care to patients of all ages. Our compassionate team consistently receives training above and beyond the standard of care. We're changing the way you see dentistry. Come be a part of our dental family. Even on the most perfect day, the unexpected can happen. But with just one call to their local Red Ribbon expert at Overhead Door, they can get their garage door fixed or replaced in a jiffy. Call Overhead Door Company of North Arkansas today in Mountain Home. Experience the best in Mexican dining. Letty's in Gasville. Voted numerous times as the best Mexican restaurant in the Twin Lakes area. Come out for delicious breakfast served all day. Or enjoy an authentic Mexican lunch or dinner. $1.49 tacos on Thursday. 10% discount for seniors every day. No time? Call Letty's and have your to-go order waiting for you. And don't forget, Letty's also provides catering for small parties, weddings, holidays, or big events. The best Mexican restaurant in the Twin Lakes area. Letty's in Gasville. Well, folks, have you ever been trout fishing before? Not since I was a little oh. kid. You'll do fine. Hey, hey, hey what, wait. what are you doing? Aren't you coming along? See you down river. How do you start this motor? I've never been in a boat before. See you down river. Well, folks, uh, have you sold a house before? Yeah, about 30 years ago. Yeah. Oh, well, you'll be okay then. You sure? Where are you, Where going? Are you going? See you at the closing. Hey! hey. At the closing. We, we should call the Z-Team. Z -team. Welcome back to the morning show on XL7 TV. Athletic Director Steve Jones from Yellville Summit Public Schools and their new head football coach, Chaston McCarthy. We welcome you. This should be fun. Thank you. Should be a good season. I'll try to do my best to get him over here during football season. And uh, I've seen his weekly schedule, so it, it'll be a little tough. But, uh, you know, we're possibly going to add one more position to the coaching staff. I think that's pretty likely, actually. And when we get everybody together, maybe we can. You know, bring the staff over or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be, that'd and, be uh, good. That'd do be some good. things. And I want to just compliment uh, our assistant coaches at Yale, well, Coach Rhodes and Coach Middleton. Uh, you know, we've been going through this process for over a month. And those two guys have just showed up every day and, and grinded away and kept the weight program going. And not you're always in danger when you lose a coach and go to another one that there's a, there's a lapse of training. And that is – one of the worst things that can happen to athletes is lapses in training. Uh, and they have not allowed that to happen. They've just, you know, been been plugging away every day. And I'm just, as an athletic director, so appreciative of the work ethic that, that those guys have displayed. Coach, how does that work over at Yaleville with the multitude of multi-sport athletes that you have there? Do they have much time to spend in the weight room for football and, and do anything other than just maybe lift a little bit? Well, uh, and, of course, different coaches do things different ways. Uh, when I was a football coach, I think Coach McCarthy is this way too. We were lifted during the season. That was part of our training. Uh, it was not the same weightlifting we did in December and January and so forth and so on. But it was still, you know, you try not to lose anything and maybe gain some if you can. Uh, you know, there's always a few athletes that will go from football to basketball. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try to work that out where they continue some weight training and not uh, – 
not have a you know four month lag there. And then those same athletes, as you well know, we've talked about this a lot. They'll go to track and baseball and softball. So we want to try to keep something worked out there. And uh, one of Coach McCarthy's uh, things he brought up in our interview, and, and I and I like this is being willing to work year round and not have. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I do think kids need some time off from sports from mm -hmm. sports sometimes. Uh, but let's keep them working as much as possible, at least, you know, a couple of days a week. And uh, that way, you know, if a kid gets to his sophomore year benching 300 pounds, he's not, you know, still at 300 pounds when he's a senior. Although, I'll tell you what, on retrospect, I'll take 300 pounds and be tickled to death with it. Let's make that 150. Yeah, yeah, we'll take all the 300 pounders we can get. Uh, but, you know, and we do. Our coaches have always done a tremendous job at Yelvel sharing athletes, and that's something that we'll have to continue. And that's one, that's one of the interview questions. Are you going to be okay with this? Because it's, you know, and we talked about we have two football players that will march at halftime in the band, mm -hmm. in their football uniform. We said, we, you have to be okay with this. And, uh, and he was. And then on my end, <clears throat> I mean, I regiment our halftimes down to the minute. i got to get them off there. They've got to get in there to their, their group and position meeting because – there's things they have to be going over. But anyway, did I get off topic there a little bit? That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> this is Monday. It, it is Monday, yeah. And uh, so anyway, you know, we've – there have been a lot going on. I hadn't slept a lot in the last two months. But I will say this. Uh, once Coach McCarthy was hired, and I felt like, you know, things were kind of in good hands and, and we were moving forward uh, – I've slept good this past week. There you go. Yeah. So, what's going on in the rest of the sports world over well, there? Man, what a week we have looking to us right now. <clears throat> well, of course, first of all, tonight, you know, we have the parent meet and greet with Coach McCarthy, but also we have softball at Cotter. That is a huge one tonight. Uh, both teams are pretty much clinched regionals, but now we're playing for seeding and, you know, first, second, third place is still on the line right here. There's been a, been a lot of back and forth. Carter has they they beat us. We we have to go over there and beat them on their home field tonight. Okay, uh, that's a big one. Tuesday night, uh, softball is at home versus flipping. That is not a conference game, but it's flipping. Okay, that's all that matters. And uh, so we're, we're playing them at home tomorrow night. Again, it don't mean anything conference wise, but you want to be the Marion County champions. That's the way I look at it. It'll right? be a cat fight. Yeah, it will be. Wednesday, and normally, you know, we've talked about this. We don't do sports on Wednesday, but uh, that is our junior high district track meet. And that will, you know, start in the afternoon. I'll be, it'll be at Eureka Springs, be over there all day. And, I mean, I fully, ex fully expect us to bring home two conference titles Wednesday. Okay. Thursday, on the docket, we have <laughs> baseball at Green Forest. Okay, non-conference game, but a good match game before you go into district and regional tournament play. Softball at ICC, that'll be a tough matchup. Okay, ICC is pretty good. And then the Bomber Relays, okay, was our – so, you know, my plan is to – I'll be at, I'll be at track this Thursday. It's the, it's the closest one I can spend the most time there, but, you know, we'll keep – be monitoring everything all the way. And then, still not done, Friday – we have baseball at Rosebud, and I may get this a little bit wrong, but I believe they have a pitcher that's signed Division One already, but I'm not right. sure who. And I may be wrong about that. You know, Rosebud's a very good baseball school for, you know, kind of being a little school, kind of in the middle of, well, between Heber Springs and Quitman. Uh, and then we have track at Heber Springs. So my plan Friday is I'll drive down and I'll go to some of the baseball game. And then I'll drive from, from Rosebud over to Heber Springs and finish up the track meet and try to get as much watched of both sports as I can. But it's a – man, it's a whirlwind week. And then next week we're – you know, we're getting into districts now. And, and actually things slow down when you get into the district tournament time because you're just playing your, your tournament games and stuff. And then next Wednesday is the senior high district track meet, and I expect us to win two more conference titles there. And on the softball side, you didn't mention, but you've got Izard County. Uh, the girls going over to Izard County on Thursday. Did I not mention that? Yes, they're going to Izard County on Thursday. Baseball's what? at Green Forest. Softball's at Izard County. Tracks at Mountain Home. Yep. 
Do you have conference tournament for softball or just go by standings? It, we have a tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, we play all season like a double round robin, and that determines seating for the – you can call it conference tournament or district tournament. It's the same thing. <clears throat> so then once you get into that, now you have to finish in the top four to advance to regionals. Uh, and then at regionals, you, you were matched up with the, you know, the 3A or 2A West or whichever it is. You have to be in the top four there to advance the state. Where is your conference tournament going to be Well, played? that's a great question that I wish you had prepared me for before I came on. I don't know. <laughs> I can't think. Uh, <laughs> You've been doing this for a number of years. How many times have I given you questions beforehand? Uh, never. Okay. And I, I have fussed about it numerous times. <laughs> I would have been prepared for that one. I can't think of where it's at. But, I mean, I could venture a guess. Probably, I think maybe Harrison. Okay. I think maybe we're doing it there. At the Will the boys complex. and girls play at the same place? Yes, sir. Yeah. At yeah. least he knows that much. <laughs> at least I know that much. I'm lucky to get through one one day at a time. This is, seems that way sometimes. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, that's all I can think of right now. You know, just like I said, we're. It's a busy couple of weeks. It is. We're. And, you know, and then we have spring football coming up too, and, and we're having to kind of coordinate that with with Coach McCarthy's schedule, and then you know, still looking to see about another coach, and there's just a lot going on. But you know, it's it's a it's a good busy. You know, it's everything's productive and positive. Will you guys play a spring football game? Uh, that's TBD. Um, most likely, it'll be a glorified practice with some situations. You know, we'll do some third down. Yeah, type yeah, stuff. not maybe like a full-on um, green and white game, but mm -hmm. um, but we'll do some scrimmaging. You know, some situations, third down, uh, red zone, goal line, that kind of thing. But now to kick off your actual season, uh, getting through some—that's not me. Getting through the summer and you come back out after you, all your team camps and whatever else you're planning on doing. Uh, will you have, of course, you're familiar with the Bomber Fest. Will you have something like that at Yeovil this year? Um, that'd be something we got to talk a little bit more about. I would love to do something like that to get some people out and get them to come watch and, and get excited about what we're going to look like on the field. And so I would love to do something like that. We just got to talk more about that first. So. Just throwing out a few ideas. Yeah. Oh, we. I mean, you know, Coach McCarthy has had several. Of course, we do Panther Pride in the park every right. every October, and that's a, a big celebration of Panther athletics. Uh, Coach McCarthy's got his own ideas, and we're just – honestly, I mean, there's nothing he's suggested that's been like, well, we can't do that. We're going to try to do everything and, and get everything in. And I mean, I want people to be excited about Panther football. And then I think that that excitement starts tonight. Coach McCarthy – Coming in, this is your first head coach position. Coming into a smaller school that you've been used to dealing with where you've got to share all your athletes, no doubt you're sharing your athletes. What is the number one thing that you want to do day one when you're full-time at Yeovil? Day one, uh, when I'm full-time, number one thing I want to do is just build relationships with those kids um, and, and start to – just develop that and make sure they know that care about them and, and I want what's best for them, not just because of what they can provide for our football program, but um, what's best for them 10, 20, 30 years down the road. And that's, that's what we're really trying to build is develop great leaders, develop great young men and set them up for success. And that's what I'm going to start trying to do on day one. So, Good deal. Are you excited about the move? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As well you should be. Good opportunity for you as well. Great opportunity for your student athletes. Uh, Coach Jones is going to be able to sleep a little bit better knowing yeah. that he's got that position filled. And, and you know, I heard something else the other day I want to share. And, and, I, and Coach McCarthy may have said this. I've gleaned quite a bit of wisdom from him, or, or someone else may have. But they said, uh, you don't always know you've been a good coach till 25 years later. Did you say that? Uh, I'm not sure that, that was me. But well, whoever said that, I'll take credit I for salute it. you. That was a good one. And I, that's what a, what a great way to look at it. Yeah. You don't always know till a long time. When you can sit back and look at the impact that you had on those young right. student athletes in the day that you were there helping, helping, not doing all the forming, but helping form their future for whatever it might be. You know, and, and I, I know I've mentioned this before, but, and I love my job through and through. The thing I don't like about it is I don't have that interaction with kids on a daily basis all the time like I used to. Yeah. And that, that part I miss. Yeah. 
Gentlemen, we appreciate you coming in this morning. Coach Jones, every Monday, it's this is your spot. So we <laughs> I appreciate should, as far as I know, I'll be here next week. Appreciate you being here. <laughs> Coach McCarthy, we look forward to seeing you here again. Uh, congratulations once again on your uh, promotion into the head coach position. And uh, welcome back to God's country. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks You've been watching me. The Morning Show on XL7 TV. We'll see you tomorrow.